Um, make a little subheading underneath where you just did this working. And that subheading is a new word, or a word maybe some of you have heard of, but most of you probably wouldn't, um, which is quantiles. What are quantiles? Okay, so, uh, even if you've never been introduced to this word before, you actually know exactly what they are, we just never said it. Um, we even were mentioning it earlier on when we have a look at our concepts before. Um, we were talking about quartiles, do you remember those? Uh, we would say the median's the second quartile. The idea of a quartile is it's a score that divides, or it's a set of scores actually, that divides you up into four equal chunks, hence quart, right? Quart for quarter, okay? So quartiles are those three scores, and we would call them uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3. And these three scores, if you have a, a set of scores, right, Q1, Q2, and Q3 break you up into four equal chunks. That makes sense? But quartiles are not the only kind of way to divide up. Maybe you want more detail than dividing into fours. So if, for example, you took this same thing and divided it into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Groups, you wouldn't call them quartiles anymore. There's 10 of them, so we call them deciles. Very good. So deciles. What if you wanted even more detail? You're like, I want to divide into 100 equal sections. You would call them percentiles. And of course, we're quite familiar with these guys because of everyone's favorite percentile, the ATAR, right? So we've talked about this before, OK? So the whole idea is we can divide up our distribution into whatever kinds of chunks we want. Yeah. So what, how many is percentile? what does percent mean? What's it? What does percent mean? Oh. No, seriously, what does it mean? Out of 100, yeah? So this is dividing into 100 chunks. Did someone, Michelle? Yeah. Okay. All right, so how do we use what we've just developed? I'll just wait till Sarang's ready. You good? Sure? Double sure? Just wanted to be certain. How do we use the CDF to work out this stuff here? Okay, um, just have a look at the first one for me. Have a look at the first one. You've got a new probability density function. Um, you can take in those details there. In fact, you've already got them, so you might as well do the working on the piece of paper that we've supplied. How do we use the CDF to find out, say for example, the, uh, the median? That's the first one that's being asked for, right? Have to think about this. We already know how to find medians. How do we use the language of the CDF to help us here? What are you thinking, Ishan? So, there's um, about percentiles. Oh, yeah, sure. To get the percentile of the graph, mm -hmm. do we use Fourier charts? Ah, we'll come to that in a minute. We'll come to that. Um, for now, don't, don't lose course with me here, right? For part A, if we're searching for a median, okay, the median we know divides you in half, yeah, it divides the score in half. So that means if we start from the bottom and go all the way up to the median, what should be, we already know this, what's the probability of all this stuff that we've already passed? It's 0 0.5, a half, right? So therefore, there is some value of x, right, the median, such that if you find that, you should equal a half, right? Because the definition of the cumulative distribution function is all the probabilities up unto your particular value, right? So that's the median. Um, you can go ahead and you can work that out. What about part B? It says the third quartile. So the third quartile, right? What we would do is we would say of your cumulative distribution function, the third quartile is this guy here, right? You start, you end, here's your third quartile, one, two, three. So how much of the probability should be covered over here? This is three quarters of the score, so it's three quarters of your probability. So therefore, f of x for this will be 3 over 4, or 0 0.75, right? Um, you're going to start to see where this is going, right? The 67th percentile for the 67th percentile. Once you know what the CDF is, then it's going to be, well, up to and including 67% of your score. So it'll be 67 over a hundred and then you're going to get a value like there will be some expression for x over here your f of x and then it'll equal that and you'll have to solve for x does that make sense or, or they supply particular um pronumerals for you to use um, one more because i think they asked for deciles right the eighth decile yeah so because we're divided into tenths right and this is the eighth one along so therefore i want to solve for it being equal to eight over ten so is that the answer 
Well, this is the way you're going to get there. I don't know what x is for any of these. You're going to find out what particular values of x would give you these particular fractions. Okay? Um, I don't know what the f of x, capital F of x is. So you're going to have to find that out um, and then use it to solve these equations. Does that make sense?